Welcome, Sopranos fans. Today, we're diving into the clandestine debate. Oh, yeah? Which lady on The Sopranos is the hottest female on the show? From the fiery Gloria to the enigmatic Vegas girl, we're ranking them all, and it's going to be intense. Who will steal the spotlight? Who will spark the most heated debates? Stick around and get ready to crown the queen of Jersey heat. In the wild world of Tony Soprano's romantic escapades, none caused quite the stir like Svetlana, the Russian dynamo with a heart of steel and only one leg to stand on. She's not just Irina's cousin, she's the epitome of unwavering stability in Tony's chaotic universe. With a wit as sharp as her prosthetic, Svetlana's resilience is unmatched. When Janice, Tony's own sister, pulls a leg-stealing stunt, she doesn't skip a beat, turning to the Russian mob for backup, proving she's as cool as they come. And when Tony's infidelity with Arena hits Carmela, it's Svetlana's world-weary wisdom that puts it all into perspective. She's the one-legged powerhouse who navigates the soprano chaos with a grace that would make even Livia proud. Enter Connie DeSapio, a receptionist caught in Tony's gravitational pull. Despite her firm, not-interested stance, Tony finds a way in, because, well, what else is a mob boss gonna do during office hours? Their steamy stress relief sessions at her desk are a classic case of Tony's work-life balance, or lack thereof. But let's face it, in the saga of Tony Soprano's conquests, Connie's just another footnote. Because when you're the boss, even born-again Christians can't resist the allure of the Soprano sway. Place right. Born-again Christian. Oh, yeah? In the tumultuous world of the Sopranos, enter Irina, the fiery Russian flame in Tony Soprano's life. But as Tony's guilt creeps in, their affair takes a dark turn. Tony tries to help Irina, but ends up cutting ties with a hefty payment. Yet, even after their breakup, Tony can't shake his concern for her. Things take a turn when Irina dates Tony's associate, Ronald Zellman, leading to a brutal showdown at Zellman's doorstep. And just when you think the drama's over, Arena stirs up more trouble by dropping truth on Carmela about Tony's fling with her cousin Svetlana. Ah, the tangled web of soprano drama never disappoints. In the kingdom of the soprano crime family, Rosalie reigned as the Queen Bee, widow to the late acting boss Jackie Sr. and mother to Jackie Jr. A tough dame with a heart of gold, she shared a tight bond with mob wives Carmela Soprano and Gabriella Dante doling out advice like a seasoned wise guy. Despite suspicions of Jackie's infidelity, Roe weathered the storm, even though she had a gym fling named Steve on the side. But when she dipped her toe into the murky waters of romance with Ralphie, little did she know it'd lead to tragedy. Ralph's involvement in her son's demise left her reeling in a whirlwind of grief and betrayal. Yet through it all, Roe remained a steadfast friend, guiding Carmela through the minefield of mob life with tough love and unwavering support. And while I can't say that Roe is really my type, despite that, many fans of the show find her character very appealing. Kelly Moltisanti is the woman who stepped into the picture, catching Christopher Moltisanti's eye. When the stork paid them a visit, Kelly found herself facing a pregnancy dilemma, fearing the disapproval of her traditional family. But Christopher, ever the optimist, and probably relieved Adriana didn't leave him any parting gifts, jumped at the chance to marry her. Enter Caitlin, their pride and joy, the apple of their mobster eyes. Kelly's presence at Soprano family gatherings was as expected as Uncle Junior's anecdotes. Yet her mourning style after Christopher's untimely demise was a whole other story. While everyone anticipated tears and anguish, she opted for a Jackie O approach, leaving Tony scratching his head. Now let's talk a bit about the lovely Cara Buono, and who you might remember from that trip down Hawkins in Stranger Things. She's like fine wine, getting better with age. At 53, she still got that charm that could make even Tony Soprano himself do a double take. In season five of The Sopranos, we meet the fiery Lorraine Caluso, a rare female force in the mob world. Known for her loan shark skills and past fling with little Carmine, she's a ticking time bomb in the drama. When the Lupertazzi's feud over succession, Lorraine plays hardball, refusing to pay Johnny Sack directly. Cue Phil Leotardo's mock execution attempt. Johnny sends his goons, Joey Peeps and Billy, whatever happened there. Though she's not a household name like some, her sass and smarts leave an impression. In the bustling backdrop of Jersey, Carmela Soprano, born in 1960, wove the threads of her life tightly with Tony Soprano. From the high school halls to the fraught turf of Meadows Independence, Carmela navigated the intricacies of motherhood while shouldering the weight of Tony's clandestine world. 
their marriage danced between tender gestures and tempestuous confrontations, with Tony's affairs weaving a web of betrayal. Yet Carmela's love for Tony remained steadfast, even as she grappled with her own desires like the magnetic pull of Furio the Beekeeper. And through Tony's trials, from near-death encounters to the relentless grip of gambling debts, Carmela stood by his side. By the way, Carmela now struts around with the rank of Major in the Avatar universe. Yeah, you heard that right. Some say it all started when she got hooked on Major Zwingli's stories. While I can't call Carmela the most attractive woman on The Sopranos, many fans of the series appreciated her looks. Anyway, $4 a pound. Deborah was called by her boss in the FBI to get in with Adriana and her fiancé Christopher in order to put Tony Soprano behind bars. Deborah assumed the name Danielle and arranged a meeting with Adriana at a local mall while she was shopping and complimented her, starting a friendship between them. Christopher wasn't fond of Deborah once she met her at the Crazy Horse. While Christopher was doing coke and drinking in the private room of the club, he tried to seduce Deborah while Adriana was present. Adriana noticed and got angry at Christopher, but he convinced her that Danielle was coming on to him. After this, Deborah tried to contact Adriana, but she told Deborah to not call her. Deborah's boss decided they should just bring in Adriana. On The Sopranos, the role of the FBI agent was flawlessly brought to life by Lola Glowden. Time may have passed, and the decades may have added layers to her story, but like a fine wine, Glaudini has aged with grace, still exuding that magnetic charm that made her character unforgettable. In the captivating world of The Sopranos, enter Juliana Skiff, a siren with a knack for stirring up trouble. Season 6 unveils her tangled web as she dives into a risky affair with none other than Tony Soprano himself. Initially, Juliana stands firm against Tony's advances, citing her engagement and stability. Yet the allure of danger pulls them closer until sparks fly during a real estate deal, igniting a fiery passion. But Tony's conscience intervenes, haunted by Carmela's unwavering loyalty. Meanwhile, Juliana finds solace in Christopher, Tony's troubled cousin, leading them down a dark path of addiction. Between us, she's black. Oh, you're probably gonna shine? She's hot too. Despite Tony's relentless pursuit, Juliana stands her ground even in the face of temptation. Their tumultuous saga intertwines until fate brings them together once more amidst the somber backdrop of Chris's funeral. Even in death, she couldn't escape the Soprano saga, forever etched as Juliana Skiffle in Tony's tangled web of existence. Juliana Skiffle, this is my wife, Carmela Soprano. Skiff. In the ever-twisting web of the Sopranos drama enters Sonia Aragon, another notch in Tony Soprano's complicated love life. Known for her past fling with Christopher Moulton Santi and her unique way of funding education, she's a Vegas encounter waiting to happen. In a surreal Vegas escapade post-Christopher's funeral, Tony and Sonia dive into a peyote-fueled journey. As they navigate the casino's chaos, Tony grapples with fate, gambling alongside a woman who embodies his moral gray areas. With her fondness for drugs, she might have unknowingly fueled Christopher's early cravings. In this mob drama, even the smallest connections can set off big consequences. I get it! I get it! <laughs> Picture this. Isabella, the enigmatic Italian exchange student? Forget about it. Turns out she's not just a foreign face gracing the Cusimano's dinner table. She's a figment of Tony Soprano's imagination. Yeah, you heard it right. Tony's mind is playing tricks on him. So next time you're re-watching, keep an eye out for those mind-bending twists. And who else could breathe life into her character than Maria Grazia Cucinota, the Italian enchantress capable of making James Bond's martini tremble in its glass? Yeah, you heard it right. The actress even played in one of the James Bond films. In a plot twist that rocked the Sopranos universe, fans were left gobsmacked when they discovered Charmaine Bucco's steamy history with Tony Soprano. The wife of Tony's buddy Artie Bucco, Charmaine seemed worlds away from the mob drama. Yet lurking beneath the surface was a juicy secret, an illicit affair with the big boss himself. While Charmaine wore disdain for Tony like a badge of honor, it turns out she once shared more than just a meal with him. Revealed in the jaw-dropping episode, Denial, Anger, Acceptance, this bombshell revelation sent shockwaves through Soprano land. With Carmela in the dark, the tension between friends simmered eventually boiling over into a spiteful confession that rocked their friendship to its core. Now let's get one thing straight from the get-go. Age ain't nothing but a number, especially when you're as captivating as Catherine Narducci. Sure, the calendar might say she's 58, 
But let me tell you, she's still got that magnetic charm that could make Tony Soprano himself weak at the knees. Remember a Bronx tale? Yeah, she was right there, holding her own amidst all that Bronx bravado. And let's not forget The Irishman, where she effortlessly stole scenes alongside legends like De Niro and Pesci. Oh, and how about Capone? Yep, Catherine was there too. But wait, there's more. You can't talk about Catherine Narducci without mentioning Chicago Overcoat, where she strutted her stuff alongside none other than Frank Vincent, who once again forgot to get his shine box. In a twist that could have sent shockwaves through the Soprano family, Tony finds himself in a steamy situation in Italy during season two of The Sopranos. While dealing with the Zucca crime family, Tony encounters Annalisa, the acting boss with a tempting proposition. Despite his reservations, Tony's drawn to her like a moth to a flame, even as he grapples with his loyalty to Carmela. Their rendezvous at the ancient site of Kumai is straight out of a mobster's fantasy, but Tony's code of honor holds firm, albeit with some financial concessions. While sparks fly, Tony manages to navigate the dangerous waters of both business and desire, proving once again he's the ultimate wise guy. Portrayed with finesse by the talented Sofia Milos, whose journey from model to actress mirrors the twists and turns of a soprano family power struggle. You might remember her gracing the screens not only in the gritty alleys of Naples, but also in the sun-soaked streets of Miami as part of CSI, Miami's ensemble. And let's not forget her stint in the coffee-fueled shenanigans of Friends. In the colorful landscape of AJ Soprano's love life, enter Blanca, a sassy senorita stirring up more drama than a mob hit gone wrong. Clocking in as his older flame, she's got the looks, the attitude, and a three-year-old son named Hector, making AJ's heart race faster than a getaway car. But this romance ain't no walk in the pork store. With Tony and Carmela eyeing her like she's more dangerous than a wiretap, Blanca's got hurdles higher than Junior Soprano's ego. And just when AJ's ready to pop the question, she pulls the ultimate disappearing act, leaving him swimming in a sea of existential crisis, or more specifically, in the pool in the backyard of the Soprano mansion. Now, fast forward to today. Daniel Ramirez, the siren of the silver screen, has gracefully aged like a fine bottle of vine. At 44 years young, she is a kid by Phil Leotardo's standards and possesses that magnetic allure that could make even Christopher Moltisanti reconsider his loyalties. You might remember Danya not just from her time hobnobbing with mobsters, but also from her stint on Heroes. Ah, yes, the days of superpowers and existential crises. Ramirez graced our screens as Maya Herrera, wielding powers that could make even Uncle Junior's eyebrows raise in surprise. In the labyrinth of The Sopranos' tangled relationships, one potential liaison that could have set the Jersey mob world on fire was between Tony Soprano and Adriana. Sure, they never sealed the deal, but boy, did they flirt with the idea. Adriana, Christopher's flame, danced on the edge of temptation with Tony, sending gossip spiraling out of control. Remember that late-night escapade for some coke and drive in season five? Rumor mill, working overtime. But before sparks flew, tragedy struck. Adriana's fate, sealed by FBI coercion, left us wondering what could have been in this saga of tangled loyalties and forbidden desires. If you're a diehard fan of Drea de Matteo, Chances are you're well aware that she struts her stuff on a renowned website, flaunting her irresistible allure for all to admire. Remember that fiery maned enchantress who sauntered into Christopher Moltisanti's world back in the D-Girl episode of The Sopranos? Yeah, that's right. The one who set hearts racing faster than Tony's pulse during a mob hit. Despite her being tangled up with Christopher's kin, that didn't deter our favorite hot-headed mobster from getting up close and personal with her. But hey, who are we to pass judgment? She's a real knockout. And get this, folks. The dame behind the allure was none other than Alicia Witt, a regular in David Lynch's eerie universe. You know, the girl who graced Lynch's Dune and the cult classic Twin Peaks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into a question that's been stirring up more debate than who gets to sit at the head of the dinner table. When was Meadow Soprano at her prime oozing charm? Now, most would point fingers at season six, where she's tantalizing Finn with a striptease. But hold your canolas, because there's a certain something about Meadow in the latter half of season three when she's cozying up to Jackie Jr. That just hits different. Jamie Lynn Sigler, the belle of the mobster ball, gracefully navigating her way into her 40s like a smooth getaway driver evading the fuzz. With a beauty that could rival Adriana's, she's not just aging like fine wine, but like the prized vintage bottle carefully stashed away in Tony's basement. 
In the clandestine web of Tony Soprano's love life, there was Valentina La Paz, a fiery mix of Cuban and Italian spice. Introduced by Ralph Cifaretto, she lit up Tony's world like a Cuban cigar. But Ralph's kinky proclivities left her feeling burnt out, and Tony became her main squeeze. Yet even as they sizzled, the flames of passion flickered. When Carmela finds Valentina's fake nail in Tony's pocket, it's like finding a bullet in the bing. With divorce looming, Valentina dreams of being Mrs. Soprano, but reality burns hotter than the sauce on her stove. A kitchen mishap leaves her bald as an FBI informant, and Tony's back to his goo-marless ways. But hey, at least he foots the bill for her flaming fiasco. In the world of The Sopranos, Dr. Melfi isn't just your average therapist. She's the one who's got Tony Soprano, the big cheese himself, on her couch spilling his guts. And let me tell you, their relationship ain't your typical doctor-patient deal. Tony's got a thing for her, a real soft spot. He's throwing gifts her way, flirting like there's no tomorrow. But Melfi, she's got her head screwed on right. She ain't falling for his charms. Even when Tony's marriage hits the skids, he's still trying to make moves. But Melfi, she ain't playing that game. She knows Tony's a complicated mess and she's keeping her distance. Sure, there's a connection there, but it's as poisonous as any Phil Leotardo's line. It's my first time here. The veal is excellent. What are we making small talk now? In the tangled web of Tony Soprano's love life, there was one mistress who left an indelible mark on the mob boss's psyche. Enter Gloria, a fiery car sales agent whose allure was as potent as her temper. Their fateful encounter at Globe Motors sparked a whirlwind romance, fueled by passion and punctuated with philosophical musings on life's complexities. But beneath the surface lurked jealousy, a trait unfit for a mobster's mistress. As Gloria's possessiveness grew, so did the cracks in their relationship, leading to a tumultuous breakup marked by threats and violence. Tragically, Gloria's spiral of rage ended in her own demise, leaving Tony haunted by her memory long after her passing. We understand each other. It won't be cinematic. If you're as intrigued as we are by the blurred lines between fiction and reality in the mob world, then you won't want to miss our full video on the Sopranos actors turned criminals in real life. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay wise and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.